The Collect Email Data Wizard allows you to collect data from other people by sending them a data entry form in an email message. Now this assumes that you have Outlook 2007 installed on your computer and also all the other recipients have it as well in order for this to work properly. Now the table that I'm going to use here to create an email message for collecting data is going to be my customers table. Let me double click and open it up. I already have three customers. Let's say that I have 50 new customers and instead of me calling them all up or looking on the web to find out their address, city, state, and zip, if I just go ahead and send them an email, they go ahead and hit the reply and fill out the form in that email and send it back to me and then automatically it updates and dumps all that data into the table here. Well, that's what we're going to do here. Now the wizard, in order to set this up or this email, is going to ask us a bunch of questions. Some of those questions may be different depending upon how you set up or designed your table. For example, let me right click and go to the design view of this table. First of all, I have all the fields here and I want all the data for my customers to be filled in by them, like their name, their address, city, state, and so on. What about the customer ID? Well, this isn't going to go out on the email form because the data type is automatically generated. So the wizard's going to say, you really don't need this in the form. We're not going to allow you to send it because we'll automatically do it for you here. Now, if the data type was something different, like let's say number, and it wasn't automatically generated for us, like auto number, then it'll go ahead and send that out in the email asking the client to fill in the number. And the reason why is because, remember, this record can't be blank as long as the primary key is assigned to it. So if it's anything but an auto number, like text or a number, it's going to include that in the message when it gets sent out for the customers to fill in the form. So again, just depending upon how you design this is how the wizard is going to ask you questions or configure your email here to be sent out. So let me go ahead and close out of here. And to get started, be sure to select your table. Come up here and click on the External Data tab. Go over to the Collect Data and click on Create Email. It opens up and gives us the purpose of the wizard here and the steps to be taken. Let's go ahead and click Next. Select one of the following types of forms. When the people get your email, do you want it to be an HTML form or do they have Microsoft Office Info Path? Well, I don't know if my clients all have Info Path, so I'll stick with the generic HTML. Click Next. Choose whether to create an email message to collect new information or to update existing information. Well, I don't want to update existing information. I mean, if I have their information, then I don't want any more. I'll just go ahead and say just give me new information because this is for all new clients. So go ahead and click Next. And then we can choose the fields down below that we want to include in the form. In other words, the fields that we'd like the clients to fill out and send the data back to us. Well, I'd like their name, double click on that, their address, double click, their city and so on, or just click on the all fields and it dumps them all over to the right. In the lower left hand corner it says fields that are marked with an asterisk are required. What that means is that, remember how I have the customer ID in the table here? You don't see it here. And again, the reason why it's not included is because it's an automatically generated field, an auto number. So Access is thinking we don't need to get that information from the client since they're providing the number for us automatically. Well, if it didn't have auto number, and let's say just number, then the customer's ID field, because it's a primary key, will be listed here by default with an asterisk saying you have no choice. You actually have to have this required because remember the primary key field can't be blank. But because this is set to auto number it's not going to be blank ever as long as we add records so that's why it's not included here. Then down below you, you've got a label to display in front of the field in the email message. So if you want to display labels in front of the fields here because they don't make sense to perhaps the people you're sending this email message to. Because remember this is all proprietary. This is what I called my fields, notes, zip, state. If they need to spell it out, select zip and type in postal code here. In any case, I'm fine with it, so I'll go ahead and click next. Then to have the replies automatically process when they arrive in my mailbox or my inbox in my Outlook 2007 program, I'm gonna go ahead and check automatically process and then add the data or the new customers to the customers table. Now up here it tells you where the replies are gonna be stored. If you wanna click on the access data collection replies, click on it down below your Microsoft Outlook will open up this little folder and it says it's going to dump it not really in the inbox but when you click on the plus sign in a subfolder to the inbox so you see where it says access data collection replies the moment we start getting replies back it's going to dump them in here once they come in here it'll actually tell us if it had any problems being able to update your customers table or add them to the customers table and also if they were successful so keep that in mind okay click cancel click next Select how you want to specify the email addresses of the recipient. Well, I want to enter the email address in the Microsoft Office Outlook and not use Access, so I'll click Next. 
Then here's the subject heading, the introduction of the body, and then down below a little bit later on you'll see the form will be filled in for us with the fields. But right now do you want to make any changes? The subject they're going to get is add customers table form. You can type in something else and say please give us your info or about your company, something like that. In any case, go ahead and give them the subject, the salutation, and click next. And then we're ready to create the email message. Go ahead and click on create. It'll open up the email message. Down below you have your form. And then up at the top, just go ahead and address it to, we'll say, Mountain Camping. Type in their email address. It's already there, so I can just hit the tab key and it fills it in for me. Also, I'll address it to myself here, q at dreamforce.us, and hit the tab key so we can see what it looks like when we get it back to us again. Then down below, you can see what we're sending out. It gives them a note that says, type in only the areas designated for the data entry, because we can't have them messing around with this. We have to have them sticking to these fields only, because if they start deleting the form, typing in text, when it comes back, Access doesn't know what to do with it because we screwed it up, okay? So as long as they stick just to these fields here to type in their data, they should be fine, and we should be fine when it comes to um, adding these clients to our customer's table. So all I have to do is go ahead and click Send. Now when I click Send, it's going to, of course, shoot one back to me here because I sent one to myself. In fact, let's see what it looks like. I'm going to click on the Start button, go up to Microsoft Outlook, open it up. Well, it's sitting in the Outbox ready to be sent. Please give us your feedback. Let's go ahead and click Send and Receive shoots it out the door but at the same time in my inbox it sends one back to me because remember I want to send one to myself so you can see what it looks like so let's say I'm one of the customers I get this email I open it up it says fill out the form included in the message and send it back to me type only in the areas your reply will be automatically processed so it's important that the form of the message is not altered so don't come down here messing it up okay so to fill in the form you're not going to come down in here and start typing the first thing you have to do is hit the reply button okay and then you can scroll down in here and click in the fields and start typing in your name or your customer's name. And then what I do is I just go ahead and hit the tab key and it automatically takes me to the next field. One, two, three, four, my way could be the address, the city, Sandy, state, Utah, UT, zip code. And you'll notice below each field it tells you how many characters that we want to have accepted into this field that you're going to type in. It says right here for the state just two characters please and then for the zip 84 and then any notes when I'm finished I can go ahead and just click on the send button right and then close out of here and then close out of Outlook here okay so now what we're gonna do is wait for the replies well does it automatically happen if I don't have Outlook open well if I double click and open up the customers table nothing's there I already sent the replies back but it's not updating but when I open up Outlook let me go ahead and close out of here. Click on Start, go to Microsoft Outlook. Let's open it up. Go ahead and click on the Send Receive button. Remember, all the replies were going to come to the subfolder of the inbox. So we click on the Expandable button here, come down to the Access Data, Collection. In fact, if you click over here, Collection Replies. There are the replies here. In fact, let me collapse this bar over to the right. It says Collecting data using email was successful so it automatically processed it. The only way we can process it is if we actually open up Outlook here. Once we open it up, it links between Access and then it updates it. How do we know? Well, let's take a look. Now I've got one for myself that I replied on, so that should be one. Let's take a look, double click, Summer Campers, and then one from another uh, client here. Let me double click, open it up, Camp Blizzard. So let me close out of Outlook here, come back to my database, double click on Customers, there's Summer Camp, Campers, and there's Camp Blizzard. It's got the address, the city, the state, everything just automatically just dumped right into those fields. And because we have it set to auto number, it automatically added the numbers in for us. I mean, that's just too cool. Saves us a lot of time. We don't have to actually do it manually, but have everybody just fill it in for us. And using, again, the collect email data wizard. Now, when you're finished with this and you don't want to process them anymore, let me go ahead and close out of the table here. Do you see up here on the external data tab to the collect data group where it says, manage replies click on that now this is the one that we sent out recently this one I sent out a little bit earlier in fact you can look down below see the messages and the times that they went out but this is the one that we were looking at that we sent out so if I no longer have need of this or I need to resend this email message because some people said oh I lost it or I didn't get it or they're just not paying attention you can go ahead and click on resend um, you also have your message options which I won't go over here and let you do that and 
more importantly, if we're done with this, you can go ahead and delete it and say yes. Let me delete that one as well and say yes and close out. So that's it. The rules are no longer there. I don't have to worry about it. Let me actually open up Outlook one more time because the last thing that we have is the actual messages here in the Access Data Collection Replies folder. If I no longer want it there, just go ahead and right click on it and delete it and say yes. It dumps it to your garbage can here which you can expand. Select it and then right click it and delete it one more time to permanently remove it from your Outlook. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.